Hi guys, Jimmy McIntyre here and welcome to another episode of Challenge Jimmy. This is where you, the subscriber, can send me your raw files and I'll process them for you. And if you want to take part in that, you can see the email address flashing up on the screen now, or you can see it in the description of this video on YouTube. And since I have a bit of spare time right now because of lockdown, I'm looking forward to doing more of these videos. So by all means, send me your best raw files so I can process them. And guys, right now until the end of the month, I have a sale on where you can get 50% off all of my products, including Raya, Pro, Lumi32, and any of my photography courses. And you'll see a link popping up that will take you to Raya Pro in the top left-hand screen right now. And one last notification, next week I'm gonna be publishing my second novel. I've been working on this for 12 months and it's about a travel photographer who gets trapped in a sinister town in New Zealand. And it's gonna be free for the first five days. So I'm gonna send out an email to all of my subscribers and you'll get a link to the ebook, which you can download completely free. I would put it up for free for a lot longer than five days, but Amazon unfortunately doesn't allow that. So let's get to the workflow. This is a beautiful image sent to me by Thomas van der Weyden. Sorry, Thomas, if I've pronounced your name wrong. I'm really terrible with these sorts of things. But congratulations on capturing such a beautiful image. Everything's really sharp. The composition's incredibly strong with this tree right in the right spot, if you ask me. And we've got some gorgeous sun bleeding onto these hills. Now this is the base exposure. I've got four exposures to work with. Usually I work with two, sometimes three, but this is a little bit trickier, so I'm going for four. This is the base exposure. This is a darker exposure, and this is the darkest exposure, and that's the brighter exposure. And this is my final image. So I've brought back the highlights. I've worked with the soft sky that we've got, I've added some warmth, I've burnt some areas, and made some really valuable adjustments which hopefully deepen the mood in this scene. Now you're gonna see some techniques that I've taught in previous videos, like dodging. The thing with these techniques is, it's great that you know these techniques, but it's a whole different thing learning how to apply the techniques effectively, like burning, for example. Where do we burn, and how does burning certain areas affect the mood in the scene? So the more you practice that, the better. We're also gonna see some different techniques as well. And we're going to have to deal with this tree as well, where there is movement between exposures, which means we basically have to use this area we have to take from just one exposure. So let's get on with the workflow. So here are the four exposures in Photoshop. The very first thing I want to do is add some warmth to the whole scene. So I'm going to go to the temperature slider and bring that up. Not too much. Let's hit around 6,750. Maybe bring the tint up a little bit. Let's hit a plus 18. We're just adding a little bit more warmth throughout the scene. Now with this base exposure for now, I'm gonna leave as it is. But for this darker exposure, if you've seen my previous videos, you'll know that I do something called matching. And this is where I brighten up the darker exposure so that blending with brighter exposures is a lot easier. But even though we're working with files from a Sony A7R 3 which have a vast amount of information, for some reason in this image, when we play with the sliders a little bit, we find that some areas get really strong halos. So I'm looking in particular here. Now I don't know if you can see it in the video, but right on this horizon, there is a white halo going around the edges. I'm gonna bring up the clarity slider so you can see that more. Now obviously I've played with the sliders quite a lot here, so there's naturally gonna be a lot of degradation, but what I actually found when I practiced this workflow beforehand was even just a moderate change in exposure highlights and shadows meant that later on, when I added a contrast adjustment in Photoshop, white edging became really exaggerated around here. Now you'll notice this part of the sky is a little bit lighter than the sky above it. And sometimes you find that. If we zoom out, you can see it a little bit better. There's a very, very slight increase in brightness just along here. So maybe that's what's causing the issue. I don't know whether or not it's an algorithm issue or an issue in this raw file, but that area seems particularly vulnerable when I play with the sliders. And I think one of the issues is because if you look to the left here where the sun is, this part of the sky is darker as well than this area here. For some reason, I don't, I don't really know why. Maybe it's just the clouds. And perhaps that exaggerates the halo along here or the appearance of the halo along here. So either way, I'm gonna be subtle with the slider adjustments here. So with the darker exposure, I'm gonna bring that up to around plus five, five. And I'm gonna drop the highlights. Not too much, let's say minus 
20. In fact, a little bit less, minus 18. And with the shadows, just a tiny bit plus 12. And again, I'm matching like I've done before. So if you watch my previous challenge video, Jimmy's, you'll see how effective matching is when blending exposures. Now with my darkest exposure, I'm gonna bring that up a little bit more. Let's say to plus 1.1. And I'll bring the highlights down just a little bit. So let's say minus 15. Now with my brighter exposure, that's really bright. And all we're going to use this for is this area to the right and left. So the area closest to us. I'm going to bring the exposure of that brighter exposure down because it's far too bright. It'll look very odd if we place this part of the image into here with it being so bright. Now that's all I'm going to do in Adobe Camera Raw right now in terms of the sliders. So I select all of my layers and I'll clean them, hold down shift and open objects. Then I will stack my exposures using Raya Pro. So guys, as usual, I'm going to show you how to do these things with Raya Pro and without Raya Pro. So anyone can follow along. Now I'm going to put my medium exposure as my base exposure. So right at the bottom there, I'm going to put my brightest exposure on top. I'm going to put my dark exposure on top of my medium exposure or my base exposure and then the darkest exposure goes on top of that. So the order of things is brightest, darkest, dark, base. So to blend these exposures I make the dark exposure invisible. I open Instamask and I can press brights one and create a relatively contrasting mask. We don't need it to be totally black and white but relatively contrasting. I think that looks okay. I'm gonna press select white and that will create a black mask on my dark exposure. Make that exposure visible, hide the marching ants, select a white brush, which means we can get straight to painting in that mask. So it's just one sweep all the way across with my left mouse button down. Then I'm gonna press Command and D or Control and D create a smaller brush and with a black foreground because if we look at our mask we can see we've got a cloud up here which isn't coming through from the darker exposure so watch what happens if i paint with a black brush sorry my mistake with a white brush on that mask you'll see the cloud comes through more clearly and that's what we wanted so there's the before and after so to do that without raya pro i'm going to delete the mask of that layer. I'm going to create a curves layer, make the dark exposure invisible, go to image, apply image, leave these settings the same as mine, then press OK, hold Alt or Option and left click on the mask, press Ctrl and L or Command and L to bring up a levels dialog and then you can create the same mask as me. So we don't want it to be too contrasting. I think that's okay. Then I create a black mask on this exposure. So I hold down Alt or Option on a Mac and left click on this button. Then I hold down Control or Command on a Mac and left click on the curves layer mask that we created. And with a white brush at 100% opacity, we press Control and H or Command and H to hide the marching ants. And again, the big brush, we can paint in that mask. Then we can press Command and D or Control and D to deselect that selection and paint in the cloud again. So that's roughly the same mask that we created just before. And then I'm going to delete this curves layer. Now guys, this time I'm just going to use Instamask with this darkest exposure because the steps are identical to these steps I've just shown you and I don't want to take too long with this video. So I'm going to select this darkest exposure, go to Instamask, and this time I'm keeping my base exposure and my darker exposure invisible because I only want to select the areas that are overexposed in this scene. So I'm going to go for a brights one again. Actually, let's try a brights two. And I'm going to bring my highlight slider along and you see we're mainly selecting the brightest parts of the image. So with that, I can press select white and then with the white brush, I can paint that darker exposure through. We can go over these areas as well. And I'm just keeping my left mouse button down. Then I press Control and D or Command and D to deselect the active selection and reduce the opacity of that darker exposure because it didn't look very natural. 
So there's before and after. In fact, I can make that a little bit stronger because I'm going to select both of these layers, press Ctrl and G or Command and G to group the layers. I'm going to open a levels layer, clip that to the group. I'm going to add a bit of contrast to the sky because it is naturally a very soft sky. So we just want to give it a little bit more energy. Now, obviously, the sun's become vastly overexposed. So with a black brush, we can paint out those changes in the brightest areas. We don't need a contrast adjustment in the horizon either. So that's before and after. So next we need to look at this tree here and you'll see we've got a little bit of movement between the branches. There's before and after. Not huge, but essentially when that happens, we're going to have to work with a single exposure. And so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a single exposure just around this area here. And I'll do that by right clicking on this base exposure and choosing new smart object via copy. And then I'm going to open this base exposure at the bottom. And I'm going to reduce the exposure a little bit and reduce the highlights a lot. And then press OK. And we're trying to match the brightness values to some degree of the darker exposure. And I'll show you why that's important. I'm going to then take this exposure and put it on top of my darker exposures. Hold down Alt and create a black mask on it. Then with a white brush, I'm going to paint in that area. And so let's have a look. There's before and there's after. You see, we're just using a single exposure for that area. Now, actually, I think that darkened that area too much. You can see it's got a really dark patch. So a simple way to fix that is just to bring up the shadows. Press OK. And that's better. There's before and after. Now, I don't want to be too sloppy with the masking. You see when we're flicking between the before and after comparison. Look, we're affecting the horizon here and you'll see we're starting to get some of that little white glow. So to avoid that, let me just do a little bit of a cleaner job of masking that out with a black brush. I just paint over there and you see we're getting rid of that haloing. So as I told you, this is a bit more of a complex workflow because there are just a few things at play here that we have to be careful of. And just one more thing to do with the exposure blending. I'm going to make this brighter exposure visible. Hold Alt or Option on a Mac and create a black mask. And I'm just going to manually paint in that exposure. So let's say with 100% opacity, I'll just paint freestyle. And there you go, I'll do it there too. It really doesn't matter if it's not perfect because we're going to bring the opacity down a lot. Let's say to around 32%. All we're doing is taking away those harsh shadows because they're a little bit distracting. And maybe bring that opacity down a little bit more. Right, so those are the exposures blended. So let's get to dodge and burning. Now, via Pro users, you've got lots of different ways to dodge and burn, but personally, I prefer to dodge and burn destructively. So I'm going to create a merge layer. Choose the Dodge tool. If you don't have Raya Pro, you can just press Control, Alt, Shift, and E, or Command, Option, Shift, and E on a Mac. And that creates that stamped layer. Then you can choose the Dodge tool. I've set my highlights to 20%. Now, the thing with dodging and burning is we need to know where to do it in order for it to have the best effect. Now, we've got this gorgeous sun here, which is lighting up the foreground. So it makes sense to exaggerate where the sun is hitting. It doesn't make sense to dodge this area in the corner, for example. This should be shaded. It would look odd if it was bright. So we have to be selective about how we dodge areas of our image. We just want to encourage areas that were already touched by sunlight. We also don't want to touch areas where we don't want our viewer to look. So look, I'm not going to dodge down here where these areas are a little bit illuminated. I'm going to do a little bit on here and on there, but that's it. No more because it'll become too distracting. We want our viewer to look right in the middle of this image. Let me create a little bit of a smaller brush. 
try and do the sides of these mountains. Try not to go into the sky. So let me go for a mid-tones. Encourage down here. And again, on this mountainside a few times. And up here. And I think he is a little bit strong, so we can fix that later. And we're just going for a, not exactly a subtle dodge, but we don't want to make it look like it's got harsh glare or anything like that. How about this area here? So if we just look at the before and after comparison, That looks good. I'm just going to do a few more areas just to make sure we've covered our bases. Now, if you're doing this and it becomes a little bit oversaturated, you can change the blend mode to luminosity, but here you can see that doesn't look good at all. So I'm going to keep it at normal. And there's the before and after comparison. I'm going to create a mask on that layer, choose a black brush, Let's say with a 30 or let's say 40% opacity and just paint this area here in the mountain out. It's a little bit strong. There we go. That's better. Then I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to dodge and burn the sky. Add more warmth to it in some areas. And by default, some of this hill here in the background. So I'm going to create a large brush, set the blend mode of this new layer to soft light Make sure I've got my brush set to 100% opacity. And I'm going to, with a massive brush, click once here. And you see we add some light. And then with a 50% opacity and a smaller brush, click it here. And on that hill as well. And then I'm going to reduce the opacity of that layer so it's not too strong. So there's before and after. We're increasing that light source to make it more dynamic. Now, another cool thing we can do, and I'm going to do this to the foreground, is increase the brightness of individual tones. And we only want to do this with the yellow and reds in this scene. But I'm going to go to Colors in Raya Pro and choose Color Adjust. Now, what this allows us to do, it creates a black and white layer. It turns that black and white layer to luminosity. And what that allows us to do is Let's say we bring the reds down. You see, we're deepening the reds in the image. We're making them darker. And I'm going to bring them a little bit darker there. And what happens when we bring the yellows up? We're actually creating contrast between those two tones. Now, of course, I don't want to affect the sky, so I can choose the mask of that layer. With a black brush at 100% opacity, I can mask out that change. But there is the before and after. You see, we added more contrast. And we can play with that more and more to get the right match. So there's before and after. Maybe bring up the yellows a tiny bit more. Yeah, I think that looks good. And I'm just going to mask out this area too. You don't want to brighten that area up. So that's quite a cool way to affect individual tones in your image. So if you've got blues or greens or reds and you want to affect those individual tones, just create a black and white layer, change the blend mode to luminosity, and then you've got these sliders which can affect change across those tones. Now as it is, because I've created such a warm scene, the two sliders that work most are the red and yellows for me. And that's the before and after. So now I'm just going to do a couple more things and then we're going to remove this lens dirt in the sky using frequency separation. So first thing, I'm going to create a levels layer and just make sure we've got our general contrast right. This should be a reasonably dark scene, as you can see from our base exposure. But we don't want it to be too dark, obviously. So let's have a look at that. Very small change. I'm trying to bring the mid-tones along, and as I usually do, bring along the output levels. And what that does is softens any harsh shadows in our scene. 
I think it adds mood to most landscapes. Obviously, it's personal taste. You might not like that, and that's absolutely fine. Let me mask out that change because I don't want it to affect the sky. So there's before and after. Now I'm going to create my vignette that I like to make. So I create a curves layer, bring down the upper midtones, bring up the shadows a little bit, bring those midtones down again a bit more. And I'm looking particularly at the sky here to see how dark it becomes. I press Command and I or Control and I with a white mask, a big brush. I'm going to paint in the sky here. Then I'm going to paint down here in the foreground and here as well next to the tree because these should be framing the shot. They shouldn't be distracting the viewer. And if that's a wee bit strong, we can reduce the opacity of that layer to about 80%. But I think that looks good. Now we want to draw the viewer towards this hill here that's lit up by the sunshine. So we can bring up the midtones with a different curves layer, press Control and I or Command and I, and paint in with a white brush that contrast adjustment. And then we select these two layers, press Command and G or Control and G. And there's before and after. You see, we've got a really open scene, which still looks really good, but the sky is incredibly bright and we want to pull the viewer towards this hill. And after we create the vignette, that's exactly what we do. We take attention away from the sky and put it onto the hill here. We also pull attention away from the bottom right hand corner and bottom left hand corners, which were a little bit too bright. And just one last check for a contrast adjustment. I think we can brighten up the scene overall, just to give it a bit more impact. But of course, I don't want to overexpose the sun there too much. So there we go. And finally, we're going to remove this lens dirt. Now you can see we've got some texture in the clouds here, which is probably going to cause an issue. So often I would just go to patch tool, select around there, and choose a different part of the sky. And that would often work fine. But you can see it's only partially worked here. I can take it over here instead. And it's still not doing a fantastic job. It's still leaving something strange there. So let me undo that. And if we choose a clone stamp and select all layers, we try and clone a different area, we might find it's a little bit too dark or a little bit too bright. So we end up with this kind of patchy stuff. So instead, what we can do as a saving grace is use something called frequency separation. Now I'm not gonna go into detail about frequency separation. I'm not gonna teach you how to do it here because I've already created a video on that. And if you wanna watch that video, click on the link that's appearing on the screen right now. And let me zoom out a little bit to demonstrate this. So we've got some lens dirt up here and there. I can go to the Filters and Finish tab in Raya Pro, or you can follow the instructions in the video I linked to. And I'm going to press Frequency Separation 16, because I'm working 16-bit here. Now, with this Gaussian Blur dialog, I'm going to click on my Lens Dirt, bring the slider along until it disappears. Let's say to around 70. Then I'm going to have two layers selected here, Local and global. Local is the layer that holds the information for smaller things, like textures. And in this example, the lens dirt falls under that category. So to get rid of it, all I need to do is select the clone stamp, choose current layer, and let's say I'm going to make a slightly bigger clone stamp, hold down Alt anywhere really in this cloud, and left click over the lens dirt. You see how that disappeared? It didn't matter where I clicked in the cloud, it still worked. So what happens if I click here instead? There you go, it's removed the lens dirt again. So this is such a great alternative when you find it really difficult to remove lens dirt. And we've got a little bit along here so we can remove that too. And then I can zoom out close that panel and that is almost the final image but there's just one thing I want to do that I forgot to mention is cropping we don't need this much in our foreground here and I don't think we need as much sky as we've got I think this image looks much better with a panoramic kind of effect so I'm cropping out the sky there 
cropping out a little bit of the foreground. I'm going to bring the right hand side in a little bit too. Then I can press OK. So with that crop, not only do we get the benefits of a very cool panoramic feel, we also feel like we're closer to this cool tree here. And so that's roughly the final image. Although looking at this, I probably lessen the glare here in the foreground in some places. So I'm going to just paint out this frequency separation layer because that's a destructive process, meaning I can't get to my black and white layer that I created earlier here. And then by selecting that layer, I'm going to gently paint that out. And the reason why that became a little bit stronger was because we added this vignette which brought in more contrast in the foreground. So that's the final image. Here's before processing and here's after. I hope you managed to sit through the whole video. This was a long one because it was a little bit more complicated than normal but I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.